on March 27th, 2023, Board of County Commissioners meeting. I will read the public charge. The Board of Commissioners ask its members and citizens to conduct themselves in a respectful, courteous manner, both with the board and fellow citizens. At any time, should any member of the board or any citizen fail to observe the public charge, the chair will ask the offending person to leave the meeting until that individual regains personal control. Should decorum fail to be restored, the chair will recess the meeting until such time that a genuine commitment to the public charge is observed. If Commissioner Alam, Commissioner Alam, if you will repeat the Pledge of Allegiance and, and if you will stand with us. Okay. Twenty three dash two ten State of the County Address. The Board of Commissioners request the board is requested to receive the twenty twenty three State of the County Address. And at this time I will ask the commissioners, county manager. Sorrell, Sorrell and Attorney Andrews to take their seats in the audience so that we can begin the State of the County Address. I want to run water. Wow. Good evening, everybody. So I'd like to welcome all of you who have joined us in the chamber this evening. And forgive me, sometimes I just want to run water and it's not crying, not yet anyway. <laughs> I want to also thank our audience for watching on us on channel eight or viewing us live, live streaming on their computers. No matter how you're joining us this evening, we want you to know that we sincerely appreciate your interest in the affairs of this wonderful, vibrant community. And that you don't mind taking the time to learn of our work over the past year. As is custom, I am indeed honored to bring you our State of the County Address. It is always a pleasure to stand before you and reflect on the successes of Durham County government and to look forward. I need to take a moment to speak about the tragedies and deadly shootings involving our young people that have taken place in this community over the last few days, weeks, and months. Too many of our teens have been victimized by gun violence, and we, the members of the Board of County Commissioners, offer our heartfelt thoughts and prayers to these families. As a community, we can never stop trying to address the many reasons for those deaths and injuries. Let's do what we can to help our community reduce these incidents of gun violence across Durham. My heart goes out 
to all the families who have had their lives forever changed due to the loss of a child. Thoughts and prayers are offered up, but we can never stop trying to address the many reasons for these deaths and injuries. Let me begin this message by recognizing my esteemed colleagues on the Board of County Commissioners. I am sure you know that we are a group of dedicated, hardworking commissioners who take our roles as public servants very seriously. I'll add that we don't mind working locally or beyond the Durham County boundaries. To, de to develop ways to support our citizens' needs and interests. I will now introduce the fellow, my fellow board members and ask them to stand. Vice Chair Wendy Jacobs, Commissioner Heidi Carter, Commissioner Namashina Burns, and Commissioner Netta Alam. <laughs> Before I recognize our leadership and employees, permit me to take a moment to, to showcase our work just a bit. I am honored to serve on the Board of Directors of the National Association of Counties, or NACO. I chair the Healthy Counties Committee, and I'm a member of the Large Urban Caucus Committee. I also was recently appointed to the Local Government Advisory Committee of the United States Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. Vice Chair Jacobs serves on several NACO committees. She was named a member of the Justice and Public Safety Steering Committee and is a member of the NACO's Familiar Faces Initiative Leadership Network. She also serves on the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners Environmental Steering Committee and the Health and Human Service Steering Committee. Commissioner Alam serves on Durham County's Public Health Board and Durham's Partnership for Children. She's a member of the Women's Democ Democracy Lab Future Presidents Program, and the Hunt Institute, Hunt State Safety Fellowship Program. And I must also add that Commissioner Alam and I were recently named founding members of the Counties for a Guaranteed Income. <laughs> Commissioner Namashina Burns serves as NACO's Vice Chair of Resilient Counties Advisory Board and Vice Chair of the Justice and Public Safety Steering Committee, Juvenile, Committee, Juvenile Subcommittee. She is also on the North Carolina Community College Foundation Board and the Board Chair for Triangle Helping All People Excel. Commissioner Heidi Carter's committee includes the Alliance Health Board, County Commissioner's Advisory Committee and Network Development Committee, Triangle J Council of Government, and Piedmont Food Processing Center. As you can see, your elected officials are involved in many endeavors, locally, state, and national. In March of 2023, Dr. Kimberly Sorrell joined Durham County as our first female county manager. I just heard a beep. And we just had a fire alarm a few minutes ago. So when I hear a beep, it's like, do, I, do we need to go outside again? <laughs> so her leadership in this first year has been outstanding. As dynamic organizations do, Durham County welcome new senior staff members. At the same time, we witnessed the departing of several longtime key leaders 
Since taking on her role as this organization's leader, Dr. Sorrell has introduced and updated organization ch chart led by the following, following executive team members. Deputy County Manager for External Affairs, Maurice Jones. Assistant County Manager for Community Stewardship, Julio Delgado. Assistant County Manager for Community Prosperity, Tammy Hall. And Chief of Staff, Shannon Trapp. Rolling, rounding out this team are three familiar faces. Deputy County Manager for Financial Affairs, Claudia Hager. Assistant County Manager for Community Wellbeing, Joanne Reese. And Dwayne Benson, Assistant County Manager for Community Safety. And let me also add that our Board of Commissioners hired Al Andrews as our new Durham County attorney. We need a lawyer in the group. He began his tenure in January. At this time, I'd like to ask all our Durham County Department heads to please stand to be recognized. Thank you for all. Your, of your wonderful leadership. Before I move forth, I want to know two department heads who retired recently, but their impact will be long lasting. Social Service Director Ben Rose retired last fall, and our acting county attorney, Willie Darby, retired at the start of the new year. We're sending best wishes to them both that they are enjoying their well-earned retirement. Let's give them an applause as well. <laughs> Finally, please allow me to, to pause to honor the memory of one of Durham County's most loyal and dedicated employees, our long time county, manor, county attorney, Lowell L. Seiler, who made his transition on September 9th, 2022. I know I speak for all of us who say Lowell was such a great man. He was always, he will always hold a special place in our hearts. Rest in peace, my dear friend. So now I want to focus on our amazing Durham County employees who have been resilient and steadfast over these past years, especially as we all work to get through the COVID pandemic. For all of you, we say thank you so much for all you do for Durham County. Yes. All our employees work hard every day. And tonight, I'd like to showcase a few of them who have helped to shine a spotlight on Durham County government. Keith Lane, our money guy, please stand up. Keith is our budget and management <laughs> service director. He was honored with a John Jack Vogt Lifetime Achievement Award for outstanding commitment of the advancement of local government budgeting and evaluation. Thank you, Keith. Charlie Fiddler, Fiddler, hope I pronounced that right. Please stand. There she is. A waste, she's a waste reduction supervisor in general services. She received the 2022 Mike Stinwell Award for being named the North Carolina Solid Waste Enforcement Officer of the Year. Next, we have Susan Tezod. It's your turn to rise, please, Susan. 
Susan is our Chief Financial Officer. And she has served as the president of the largest city county finance officers association, known as the Big Ten Group. Thank you, Susan. Stand up, please. Ryan Eaves. Is he here? Ryan? Ryan is our Stormwater and Erosion Control Division Manager, the North Carolina Sedimentation Control Commission presented us an award of excellence in the large program category. This honor highlighted the county's response to work conditions created by COVID-19 as along as alongside along with our status as a leader in erosion control across the state. Congratulations to Deputy County Manager Claudia Hager on her 2023 Women of the Year Award. With the, with the Triangle Business Journal. Hager is among a class of 25 exemplary women celebrated this year. Women select for this honor have positive reputations in their areas of expertise. They exhibit outstanding leadership and noteworthy accomplishments. These employees certainly represent all our employees and the great work going on every day in Durham County. Will all our county employees please stand and let's give them all a big hand of applause. You know, we can, we work, county employees work so hard, sometimes we don't acknowledge them enough. Tonight, we just want to take the time to say thank you. Thank you. And I just noticed my mayor's in the building. Thank you, Mayor Elaine is in the room. Thank you for being here. Certainly, this past year has been filled with achievements and accomplishments across the enterprise. Earlier this year, it was my honor to be part of the delegation that traveled to Lake Placid. Polis, please. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> for, a for a final vote by the International University Sports Federation to bring the World University Summer Games to the region in 2029. Durham, along with Raleigh, Chapel Hill, Greensboro, Cary, will be the locations of these games. This will be one of our state's largest ever sports events and is expected to bring an economic impact of nearly $150 million to this state. This regional planning effort involved the state, colleges, universities, several corporations, and individuals. I want to especially acknowledge Hilbert Carroll, the North Carolina BID Committee Chairman and CEO, and thank him for his leadership. This has been his vision for over 30 years. Now, to the work begins in earnest. Please watch the video. North Carolina's natural beauty, unique attractions, entertainment, and culture will create lasting memories for the participants of the 2029 World University Games. North Carolina is home to passionate fans. And Central North Carolina 
is America's leader in collegiate sports championships with a track record of success hosting major sporting events. North Carolina's University Hub region is said to have the most top tier sports facilities per capita than any other region in the world. Central North Carolina has an extensive system of university, municipal, and private sports facilities, as well as existing campus housing, which means there is no need for any new construction. The Greensboro Coliseum Complex is the largest sports and entertainment complex in the southeastern United States. and has hosted every level of U.S. collegiate championships as well as Olympic trials and international competition. Well, University Games, North Carolina is ready for you! Truro Stadium at North Carolina A&T State University recently hosted the world's largest track meet for youth with over 14,500 participants. Wake Med Soccer Park has been selected by the NCAA to host more national championship collegiate events between now and 2026 than any other venue in the country. The Dean Smith Center at UNC Chapel Hill is among the largest on-campus arenas in the nation. How about that? The PNC Arena has the reputation of having the best fans and the loudest house among major arena venues in the United States. Our goal is to host one of the best World University Games ever with a great participant experience that showcases all that North Carolina has to offer. Let's do this. An opportunity to compete on the global stage. 600,000 spectators. 275 sporting events, 150 countries, 13 days. Many teams, one dream, and we're ready to be the best host that you have ever had. Thank you. M many teams, one dream. This will be wonderful for our region. And the purpose of showing this tonight is the work begins right now to get ready, to have our young people participate and be involved in this. The adults will be there, but what we want is our young people to begin to get ready for this, because it will be extraordinary for them to be participating in it. Our Board of Commissioners, along with the County Manager's Office, received the North Carolina Corporate Extension Partnership Award. This honor was presented to the annual North Carolina Association of County Commissioners Conference. The County Partnership Award recognizes local governments for their outstanding partnership with the North Carolina Corporate Extension. This award noted the county's value for collaborative leadership, and innovative approaches from the staff that benefit Durham County residents. For the second year in a row, we received multiple awards from the National Association of Counties. Durham County was named a NACO Achievement Award winner for several programs. And the programs are listed, Durham County Transit Plan, the Administrative Assistant Chat Box, Durham County the Board of Election, Ballot Tracking Application, Durham County Social Services, Low Income Homeowners Relief Program, um, Library Innovative League, Mo Mobile Integrated Healthcare, Community Paramedic Program. Our great Public Health Department picked up several important awards, including a National Association of City and County Health Officials 2022 Innovative Practice Award honorable mention for our Durham County COVID-19 Data Initiative. 
a $750,000 grant was received from the Duke Endowment to support anti-racism work with a partnership for Healthy Durham and a certificate of recognition from North Carolina Division of Public Health for the healthy county health assessment. Durham County Emergency Medical Services received the American Heart Association Mission Lifetime EMS Gold Plus Award for the fifth consecutive year. This award is given to EMS services for implementing quality improvement measures for the treatment of patients who experience severe heart attacks. I could go on with more honors and awards received by our departments and employees, but I hope these give you a sense of how impactful the work of our departments is across the spectrum. At this time, I'd like to transition and touch on a few of our board's important priorities from the past year and beyond. I will start with one of the most significant actions taken by the board, the decision to conduct a 2022 general obligation bond referendum in the amount of $550.2 million was critical. It's the largest one I've seen here in 14 years. Indeed, this was Durham County's largest bond ever before our voters. This bond included $423 million for Durham Public Schools, $112 million for Durham Technical Community College, a $13 million for our Museum of Life and Science. Thankfully, all three bond questions were overwhelmingly approved by our voters in November. Certainly, we now look forward to the new buildings, renovations and acquisitions, and future expansions this money will produce for these three vital partners. Certainly, safe, affordable housing is a vital need that helps support our entire well-being and quality of life. Earlier this month, we heard the results of our annual city county satisfaction survey. Again, not surprisingly, affordable housing registered as a top priority. Durham County has a commitment to affordable housing, and we are developing two projects on East Main Street. The 300 East Main Street project includes 110 units of mixed income affordable housing and a parking garage. The project also will have a child care, pre-K space for children from birth to five years old. It will accommodate 86 children. This project includes 3,000 square feet of commercial rental space focusing on nonprofits and other organizations that will have a positive social impact. The deck is almost done, and some work, and soon work will begin on the affordable housing section. Our 500 East Main Street housing component has 195 units of mixed income house, affordable housing and a 246 unit market rate housing wrapper with commercial retail space. It is meant to be very suitable for a possible grocery market and other tenants. This project also includes a parking garage. Construction on the deck and market rate housing is currently underway. The affordable housing construction will soon follow. And the city of Durham and the county have agreed to work together to use some of its combined opera funds for several affordable housing projects. Another example is a city opera award, and that, that is the American Rescue Plan Act. 
award is in the amount of 644,000 for reentry housing, which will increase the affordability of housing for justice-involved Durham residents. We received, the county, we received 62445 to $275 from the federal government to make transformational changes across the community as part of the American Rescue Plan Act program. Staff took time to create a strong evaluation process to make sure we were using the funds in accordance with the guidelines set by the U.S. Treasury Department. Because if we don't do it right, we have to set them back. We invited nonprofits to apply for funding in the permitted categories and provided workshops to help them understand the process. And we have to thank Claudia Hager for leading that charge. 69 nonprofit organizations responded to our request for proposals seeking $20.2 million in funding. Staff recommended 49 proposals totaling $10,383,000. One hundred thirty-nine. I got to get those numbers right to move forward for funding. Contracts are now being finalized and distributed to the successful groups with an end date of December thirty-one twenty-four. We awarded fund funding in several focus areas that align with the county's opera framework. And we note them on the screen. If you, I won't read all of those off, but they're on the screen. And more information is on our website uh, for a full list of the nonprofits. Let's talk a little bit about our community safety. In an effort to holistically address community safety, our board supported the establishment of a new department. It is a community and Prevention and Support Service Department. This new department brings together three program areas that were previously operating separately. Bull City United, My Brother's Keeper, and Project Bill. The, the department's focus is to provide coordinated and problematic, programmatic support and system level strategies in partnership with the community to promote residents and community safety and prosperity. In September of 2022, the department hired its first director, Crystal Harris. Here are a few highlights from each division. Bull City United entered into an interlocal agreement with the city of Durham to expand its work to reduce gun violence. In census tracts, they were experiencing higher firearm-related incidents. We don't get anything done by ourselves. The collaboration between the city and the county is amazing. The staff was expanded from 7 to 25. Bull City United received a Brian Justice Assistant Grant under the Department of Justice in amount of $250,000. Through this grant, this division will utilize this critical community project to examine cross-systems approach to address gun violence and offer recommendations for promising practices and sustainable solutions. Now, my brother's keeper secured a program manager after the position had been vacant for nearly two years. Durham, My Brother's Keeper, is now utilizing the national MBK model to continue the work to improve life and career outside, out, career outcomes for young boys and men of color. Now, Project Bill received an additional $25,000 from Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, reallocated funds to expand 
skill building, building opportunities for its participants. Beginning last month, the program implemented curriculum based groups sessions for its participants. Now we've been involved with the Boys and Girls Club. The Boys and Girls Club, the county is participating with the Boys and Girls Club in Durham and Orange counties to expand tutoring services, including an initiative that collaborates with Durham County Library, operates to expand homework to help the, through in-person and remote learning options. The Boys and Girls Club of Durham and Orange Counties was recently recognized by the National Headquarters Boys and Girls Club of America as one of the highest performing clubs in the Southeast region. There are over 3,700 Boys and Girls Clubs that serve more than 4.4 million youth across the nation. For two consecutive years, the Boys and Girls Club of Durham and Orange Counties have been identified by the National Office as the best in North Carolina for two consecutive years in student performance. Durham County's investments in this operation will expand evidence-based support services for youth and their families. Let's talk a little bit about Hey, Born, hey Ty Reborn. Last fiscal year, Durham County government and the city of Durham established an interlocal agreement to expand community-based programming coordinated by counties, community intervention and service, county and support service department. The Hey Ty Reborn Justice Movement serves as an umbrella organization that, work is, that works in concert with existing community partners to help develop and coordinate strategies that, that interrupt the cycle of violence while concurrently increasing the health and prosperity within marginalized communities. The organization will coordinate with a network of nonprofits that will provide services to job seekers, including former justice involved and or gang involved persons. In January, our board allocated $2 million to leverage federal funds awarded by Congress in the amount of 700,000 to support the Hey Ty Reborn justice movement efforts. We must thank our representative, our former representative, David Price, for ensuring that these funds were approved so that this important work can now continue. In other efforts to address community safety needs, Durham County Sheriff Clarence Burkhead collaborated with celebrated Hillside High School drama director Wendell Cab to produce a play called State of Emergency. The goal of the play, which was performed for an entire week, was to address gun, school gun violence and engage in honest dialogue about the reasons and remedies for the troubling escalation in school violence occurring locally and across our nation. I was hastened to add that Governor Roy Cooper named our sheriff to the North Carolina Task Force for Racial Equity in Criminal Justice and to the Governor's Crime Commission. With these appointments, our sheriff is using his influence to address key issues, legislation and policy changes to help improve our safety and quality of life. We will continue our focus on working collaboratively to help reduce incidents of crime and violence across a community. And you know, we have to talk about our master aging plan, about our seniors. Because if, you know, if we live long enough, all of us get there. If we're not at that already. 
The work around Durham County's master aging plan is positively moving forward. Much like communities everywhere, Durham is experiencing a growing number of older adults, and those adults are living longer. Our board is committed to bringing resources to bear to ensure that our seniors age with dignity and enjoy a comfortable lifestyle in their golden years. The Master Aging Plan Steering Committee is in the process of convening the livability working groups to address community support and health services, senior hunger and nutrition, social participation, respect and social inclusion, elder abuse, neglect and exploitation, and housing. As committees are being formalized, action plans with strategies to address the key components will soon emerge. That final plan will have responses addressing social isolation, safety, and emergency preparedness, communication, and information sharing, accessibility, mem memory care, racial equity, social equity status, and more. We thank the steering committee for taking on this important issue and look forward to the results they will bring forth. One of the issues that is really not just Durham issue, it's a national issue. Nationally, black women are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy related causes compared to white women. And Durham is no exception. This is, uh, this is black maternal health. This board continues to prioritize black maternal health. And our public health staff and community partners have worked to improve systems to better address the needs of our black birthing community. Expectant mothers with pre-existing health conditions are being given blood pressure monitors. Continued steps are being made to ensure that Durham is a breastfeeding friendly environment for all families, such as encouraging employees to provide lactation spaces. To further increase maternal health support, we're actively seeking a women's health nurse navigator to better align this work and looking for funding to staff in-house ultra somographics and doulas at our maternal health clinic. Durham County Government of Public Health continues its collaboration with Born in Durham that is focused on maternal and infant health outcomes with a goal of eliminating prenatal inequities in Durham County. Durham County Department of Public Health has partnered with Guilford County Health Department, North Carolina Department of Health and Human Service, and other key stakeholders to convene a regional black maternal health and infant mortality conference on April 14 through 15. Certainly, we will continue reaching out into the community to strengthen existing partnerships as well as establishing new partnerships to continue the pursuit of a healthy community by focusing on the women and children of Durham County. Mental health. Our community mental health hubs. Durham County is certainly exploring ways to ensure more entry points for uninsured and underinsured residents who typically may not have access to mental well-being. Supportive services with licensed clinic, clinician, clinical professionals. We are working on such plans through partnership with FAITH and community-based organizations, which are central in Durham County. I'm excited to note that very positive conversations are taking place with potential funding partners 
who are supportive of this concept. And we hope to launch this program very soon. And we'll talk a little bit about the National Opioid Settlement. Durham County hosted a public input and information session on the National Opioid Settlement on March 20th, right here in this chamber, where subject matter experts shared their knowledge and experience with the attendees and answered questions. A diverse group of stakeholders came out to listen and to provide valuable feedback. The feedback gathered from the session and a community survey, which closed at the end of January, will be used by the county commissioners to prioritize how to spend $11.6 million in funding over the next 18 years from the settlement. It will also guide decisions on how we address the opioid academic, support treatment, recovery, harm reduction, and other life-saving programs and services. So we've got a lot of money to spend, and not as many, it doesn't, it's not as long as we may think. Now we'll talk a little bit about our tax assistance, taxpayers' assistance. The long-term homeowner relief program was created to assist residents who are at or below 30% of the area medium income with their tax payments. In its first year, the program received 339 viable applications. Of that total, 200 applications were approved and 142,000 $952 helped our target homeowners. I'm delighted to know that this year, the program received a 28% increase in applications. The, with the program closeout complete, the total households assisted were 338 for a total of approximately $357,000. Certainly, this is a benefit to those homeowners that we want to continue be, being homeowners. Well, our economic development success continues. Since the beginning of the new year, the board has approved three new incentive-based community partnerships. Cadillac, Cadillac, Eli Lilly, and Kemp power. Continually, these three partners total more than $350 million in new investment and 902 new jobs to Durham County, bringing in more than $2 million. On average, in tax revenue annually over the first five years, in sum, all three companies have made aspirational commitments of more than $42 million in new spending with minority and women-owned firms. Kempower, an electric vehicle charging company, will be bringing more than 360 jobs that are accessible to high school graduates and associate degree holders paying an average wage of $50,000 plus benefits. They are also working with Durham Tech on innovative new programming to help to develop a pipeline to train students and plug them into these new jobs within a growing industry. Thanks, JB. Eli Lilly's expansion will support an increased demand for their products that treat diabetes and create a maximum of 100 jobs. The, con the company estimates that approximately 90% of the jobs created by this project will be entry-level roles that can be hired in Durham Tech's BioWork certificate or a high school education. All jobs pay an average wage of $56,000 
plus benefits. And we also working with our small business. Durham County and the city of Durham partnered with Small Carolina Small Business Development Fund to provide low interest loans to Durham small businesses that were impacted by the pandemic. The loan fund pairs access to capital with technical assistance so that eligible applicants have the best opportunity for success. To date, the loan fund has awarded 52 loans totaling more than 1.2 million. 73% of those firms are minority owned. 48% of, of those firms are women owned. And earlier this month, the board approved funding to purchase the Streetwise MBA program offered through Enterprise Incorporated with a small investment of $57,000. This program will continue another phase of the county's initiatives to support our community small business owners. Using resources, education, and support over a seven month period, this is intended to help sustain and grow their businesses. Small businesses located in some of our low to moderate income communities that are minority owned will be audience for these programs. We will bring in resources to equip them for success and help them build capacity and master the tools needed to apply for local and state government contracts. Our board supports our ongoing outreach reach to underutilized businesses. We have targeted quarterly training and networking events. Many of these events have been collaborative efforts with the City of Durham, Durham Public Schools, the Institute, and other organizations. For larger construction projects that are managed through construction management, at-risk construction teams, coordinated efforts occur to co-host informational bid, pre-bid, and outreach sessions. In February, Durham County Commissioners and staff traveled to Washington, D.C. for the annual legislative conference of the National Association of Counties, or NACO. Great things took place at that conference, but I'm most proud to announce that Durham County became a founding member of counties for guaranteed income. This initiative includes 15 founding counties and 18 founding board members, including myself and Commissioner Alam. Commissioner Alam spoke eloquently at the White House with President Biden's staff regarding funding for a national guaranteed income program and sharing important points about how much families need their assistance. As this is a program that we can start, but we need the federal assistance to continue it. Counties for Guaranteed in Income follows in the tremendous success of Mayors for a Guaranteed Income. Founded by former man, may, mayor of Stockton, California, Michael Toombs. So now, our goal as founding members of CGI is to implement cash-based policies at the local, state, and federal level. Those of us in county government will join this effort and receive technical assistance for new poly programs across the country. This extra money can be critical to help with food, utilities, and household expenses for children, or even paying down debt. Now this, this really, this part, 
that we just love every year. This is our budget. This is our 2023 budget. At the end of it all, the Board of Commissioners prioritized priorities, priorities are reflected in our annual budget. Our approved budget is $793,563,860. The property tax rate remained unchanged at 72.22 cents per $100 of valuation. Durham Public Schools received $177,151,627 in funding, an increase of $10.95 million from last year's budget. Pre-K support received an additional funding of $880,000 for pre-K expansion, increasing total annual funding of $6.4 million. The approved budget provided $9,743,434 for Durham Technical Community College, an increase of $789,262. Durham County is focused on providing educational support at all levels. In addition to providing salary increases for our employees, our budget additionally supported efforts to recruit and retrain hard to fill positions such as nurses, EMTs, general services, sheriff's office employees, and youth home employees. Staff is currently preparing for this year's budget process. Our board met in a budget retreat a few weeks ago to hear important information about the current economic climate from our budget and finance staff. Our tax administration and well-known economist, Michael, Dr. Michael Walden, I recall Dr. Walden addressed three key issues, the labor market, inflation, and recession. Without getting too much into the weeds, we all remain aware of the financial uncertainties that we are seeing as we work to recover from COVID pandemic. Our current economic climate is facing challenges, but I am confident in our tax, finance, and budget team. You hear that? You hear that? <laughs> I am confident. In our team, I will simply say that we continue to be financially well managed. Durham County has a healthy fund balance to help us weather any significant economic downturn or unexpected needs. Most importantly, we will, re we will remain good stewards of our dollars as we move forward. Again, I ask you to please. Follow our budget process in the coming months. We are set to receive the manager's recommended budget on May 8th, and we'll conduct a budget public hearing on May 22nd. As I wrap up my comments, let me address one more issue. Mayor Elaine O'Neill, along with the city staff, this board, and our county staff, and DPS, Durham Public Schools, and, uh, and the chair of the Board of Education of DPS, is working, are working in concert to collaborate on better engaging our youth in pro productive work and recreation efforts. Durham City and Durham County are working to provide paid summer employment in many of our departments to help our young people gain valuable work experience and develop skills. The city and the county and Durham Public Schools are working together to host job fairs. An upcoming job fair is being held on Saturday, April 22nd at Walltown Recreation Center. 
Seasonal and year-round positions are available for youth age 16 and up. This is one example. The city, county, and Durham Public Schools are committed to enhancing or creating as many summer activities as possible through parks and recreation and other venues, including nonprofits, to give our children places to play, learn, and be safe during the summer months. If you have ideas, jobs, Inter internships, or would like to help, please let us know. Our youth need to provide, our youth needs us, all of us, to provide opportunities that will be positive and productive for them. And as I close, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, it has been my pleasure to work on projects and initiatives that improve the quality of life for all our residents. I eagerly anticipate continuing and expanding the innovative work that must be done to ensure that Durham County remains on top of the list of high performing local governments and that we shift the paradigm of our children. Shift the paradigm of what's happening in this community with our children. Thank you for your attention and have a great evening. Thank you. Hey, commissioners, thank you all again for your patience. Um, are there any adjustment, agenda adjustments from the board? Hearing none, we will move on to announcements. Uh, Ms. Wallace, are there any announcements? Yes, ma'am, Chair Howerton, I will read the announcements that are published in this evening's agenda. Apply for summer internships, management internships, and fellowships with the Durham County. Durham County government is looking for Durham County teenagers, college students, and recent graduates of our local universities to apply for summer internships manager internships, and management fellowships. Get your local government career off to a fantastic start by joining us. There is a website, I'm sorry, a link, uh, www.dconc.gov. So if you go to the county's website, you'll be able to access uh, the, the information pertaining to the internship. DECO, Department of Public Health, COVID-19 vaccine clinic hours. At Durham County Department of Public Health, uh, walk-ins are now welcome. Uh, doses are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Closed from 12 to 1 p.m. Uh, the clinic is closed on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and every weekend. You can visit decopublichealth.org backslash COVID vaccines for additional information. Master Gardner Plant Festival on April 1st. Spend the morning with Durham County Cooperative Extensions, Master Gardener, volunteers, and community partners learning about all things plants, 
and the first 200 attendees can choose a free plant to take home at the Master Gardener Plant Festival on Saturday, April 1st from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., located at 721 Foster Street. You can also get a preview of some of the plants that will be offered for purchase at the following week's plant sale. There is a link there for additional information. Football, Frisbee, festivals, and more at the Durham County Memorial Stadium. Did you know that the Durham County Memorial Stadium hosts a variety of athletic and community events each month? In April, there are Ultimate Frisbee, Men's and Women's Soccer, Track and Field, North Carolina Central and Shaw University Spring Football Games, the Little River Community Complex Fair, Special Olympics, and more. There is a link that will take you to a calendar that displays all of the events as well. Public feedback needed for sewer system development fees analysis. The public is invited to provide their input regarding upfront sewer system development fees for the Durham County customers tributary to the Triangle Wastewater Treatment Plant. Residents may submit their comments to utilities at dconc.gov and include system development fee analysis in the subject line. There are two links where you can review the draft copy um, on our website. And lastly, third annual Library Fest is coming in April. Durham County Library and the Durham County F Library Foundation will host the third annual Library Fest, the storytelling edition from Monday, April 24th till Sunday, April 29th. The library is excited to feature headliners, including Terry McMillan, Jet, Jetco, uh, Chef Sean Sherman, and Sheila Turnage. All programs are free, but some require registration. Visit the Durham County Library events calendar for additional information and search Library Fest. Board, that concludes the announcements that are in our agenda this evening. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. We are down to, commissioners, we have um, before us a March 6th work session minutes and March 13th regular session minutes. Are there any comments or edits to those minutes? Hearing none, I will ask for a motion to approve. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve the minutes as, as written and stated. Second. Is moved and properly second. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes five to zero. Um, we have one ceremonial items, 23234 resolution in support of school meals for all North Carol all in North Carolina. So the board is requested to approve the resolution. Uh, and as I will ask Commissioner Carter if she will please read the resolution. So it would be my pleasure to read this resolution. The Durham Board of County Commissioners resolution in support of school meals for all children in North Carolina. Whereas right now, children in North Carolina are held back to hunger. And whereas we can improve student outcomes and strengthen our communities by making breakfast and lunch available in North Carolina public schools at no cost to families. And whereas one in six children in North Carolina experiences hunger on a daily basis and in our most rural counties, as many as one in three children experience hunger. And whereas providing no cost school meals to all students in North Carolina public schools will ensure every child has access to healthy, nutritious breakfast and lunch, promote student academic achievement, and eliminate meal debt and lunch shaming. And whereas no child should go hungry, yet every day in North Carolina, almost 400,000 kids don't have enough to eat. And whereas studies show that providing students with healthy meals at schools makes them more attentive and engaged in the classroom, leading to better grades, higher attendance rates, and higher graduation rates. And whereas nearly 20% of children in North Carolina who lack access to regular nutritious meals likely do not qualify for free or reduced price meals at school, 
And whereas school meals are healthy and meet strict national nutrition guidelines, and whereas no-cost school meals would reduce the stigma associated with free and reduced-priced meals and, and lunch shaming in North Carolina, and whereas no-cost school meals would ensure every child has the opportunity to access nutritious meals at school, and whereas school meals are an investment in our economy, and whereas we all do better when all children have healthy meals. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Durham Board of County Commissioners, advocates for the North Carolina General Assembly to include recurring funding for no-cost school meals in the state budget. This the 27th day of March, 2023, in places for all of our signatures. And Madam Chair, I assume we will um, approve this resolution and then we'll be sure and send it to our local delegation. I know there has recently been a day of, of, of activity around this led by the North Carolina Alliance for Health and, and other partners um, where they were advocating at the General Assembly for no cost school meals for all, universal free lunch and free breakfast for all students. And I think the timing is really good for us to adopt this now. And I'm really pleased that we have it on our agenda tonight. Yeah. So oh, thank you. Any other comments from commissioners? Commissioner Jacobs? Yeah. And I think we should also share this with the school board as well. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Thank I'm you. sure that they will. Um, this as well. Be glad that we're passing the resolution. Thank you. So, uh, Monica, do we all need to sign it and then you send it to the school? And I did get signatures, um, and at the board's request, I will make sure that it is emailed out tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So, but and, and it doesn't have to be. It doesn't need a vote or anything. No, ma'am. No. No. Okay. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Carter. Now we're down to our consent agenda. We have five items. There is one citizen that wants to speak on, on one item here. Um, so what I will do is ask, are there any others that commissioners want to speak on or pull? If not, I will ask for a motion to approve everything except 230195. I get a motion. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda items um, in totality absent 23-0195. Thank you. Okay. Second. Okay, it's been moved and properly second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion approves um, five to zero. So um, we have a citizen that um, Gwen Silver, you would go to the podium. Oh, yeah, you're over here. Okay. And state your name and address. Good evening. I didn't ask to pull that that matter. I just wanted to speak on it okay. and commend the Environmental Forward uh, of Environmental Affairs Board for the work that that they did last year. But I'm speaking on it because um, they they have a goal to address environmental changes in the county, and I'm not sure if they're aware of the changes that developers have asked to change the, the Unified Development Codes. And those pro proposed changes are called the Simplifying Codes for Affordable Development, called SCAD, which is um, being reviewed by the City Council right now. Those changes are many, and they are major. On November 12, in 2015, I attended the Little League Creek Watershed Meeting at East Regional Library. And I received the volume one of the Protecting Our Waterways, Protecting Our Water. And that was a fact sheet about the Little League Creek Watershed Improvement Project. It reads in part, the majority of these creeks are experiencing moderate to high stream bank erosion, which is likely a result of increased stormwater runoff volumes caused by increased urban development. 
and as we all know, our county is developing rapidly. This fact sheet states that 43% of stream quality was rated fair, 52% was rated poor, only 5% was good, and none were rated excellent. I urge the City Council to have the Environmental Affairs Board review and weigh in on the SCAD for its impact on rural Durham County and the quality of the Little Reed Creek and other streams. This is about environmental stewardship and community prosperity. Yes, <laughs> development is inevitable, we know that. However, Durham needs responsible development, strategic development, and environmentally sound development. We need not to have development just for development. And I want to thank you for your time. And I'll leave this packet that has copies of some of the documents on the Little League Creek and some of the streams in Durham County. Again, thank you for all the things you've done in the past year and all the good things that Durham County is doing. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on this item, Commissioner Jacobs? Um, I, I just wanted to respond to the citizen comments. Commissioner Carter, you're on the Environmental Affairs Board. I think that's an excellent suggestion. Um, if you could uh, request that they do uh, look into this issue and make their uh, recommendations to us, because that will be coming to our board. Thank you. Sure. I think that that's a very good suggestion as well. You have something, Thank you, Ms. Silver. Something else you wanted to say? This uh, item was on the May 20, um, March 20th City Council agenda, and it's been uh, delayed until May 3rd, so it's yeah. a very short window. But I'll leave the information with the clerk. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. So are we approving this tonight, or are you asking us not to approve it? What? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Anything else on this one, on this item? Uh, I move that we approve that item, the EAB report, and with the understanding that based on this comment, I will uh, re relay the request to the EAB chair asking for input to us about this SCAD. All right. Second. Been moved and properly second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Passes five to zero. All right, we are down to our boards and commissions. One second. Okay. Madam Chair. So I understand that Commissioner Burns has a motion uh, regarding the. Um, Madam the Chair, I have boards. a motion. Okay. You got us mixed up yet again. It is Commissioner Long. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion regarding the uh, commission appointments. I would like to make a motion to extend the application period for the RDU Authority Board to encourage more applicants seeking appointment. Uh, barring that any candidate receiving majority support on the ballot. Uh, there's a motion on the floor to extend the process of this particular Raleigh Durham Airport Authority. Barring any candidate having majority. Okay. So, so if um, a candidate has majority today you're saying um, you do not want to extend it and is that is that mm -hmm. okay. I mean, if is there since there's two vacancies um, if one candidate make has a majority then they would continue to be appointed if two candidates don't have a majority then we keep it open to end if two do have a majority then and that mm -hmm. um, I, I'll second it I'll third it um, so it's been moved and second. I'd like to hear a response from the clerk before we uh, vote on it. Is there a problem? Is there any concern with doing that or just 
No, ma'am. It's the board's pleasure. If okay. the board would like to extend the application period, we can definitely do that. Okay. All right. Uh, Commissioner Jay. I just want to know in terms of process, we usually vote first and then make decisions about what to do afterwards. So just want to note the, in terms of process. I, I want to clarify in terms of process, who up here has not voted? We voted. So there is a motion and a second on the floor. So we'll have to take action, either vote or rescind the motion. Sorry, I just want to clarify. I'm, I meant to say voting and hearing the results of the vote. I'm sorry, just to clarify. So what's the pleasure of the board? Are we Madam Chair, on readiness, there has been a motion and a second made. All in favor? Aye. No. So we got many ayes. Okay. So so the motion passes four to four to four to one. Okay. That this item will be moved, will be re okay. So I contingent on the outcome that it will be advertised again. Just the RDU board. Okay. All others, if there is a consensus on the vote, the attorney will, will call those names. But if there is not a, a majority for the RDU board, if I'm correct, then the RDU board will be um, advertising will continue okay. for the RDU right. board only. Gotcha. I mean, I did vote for the RDU board. I assume we all voted. Yes. Thank you, board members. Um, I will go over the balloting for the um, boards, the appointed bodies. For the, uh, just bear with me one second, I need to include final votes. One second. So I'll take these in order, and then I'll have a note regarding the last one for boxing and wrestling commission, uh, one vacant and a large position. Uh, the vote is for Harold Hubbard. For the city county appearance commission, one uh, at large vacancy, the vote is for Sabrina Delaney. For the Durham County Women's Commission, uh, vacant at large position, the vote is for Messina Reddish. For the um, memorial, one second. Just bear with me one second. I want to make this number right. For the Memorial Stadium Authority, one vacant at large, to vote is for Jonathan Leach. And now for the Airport Authority. So we have a vote count, and I think the motion was, if I, I don't want to mess this up, so I want to make sure I understood what I heard. What I heard is that you want the vote read, and then you want it to be delayed if there is not 
if if there are not two candidates, is that what I heard, or did we vote to? My the three feature motion. I, I she didn't say if it was two candidates. She said we read it again. So the motion was to extend the application period to encourage more applicants, barring any candidate that does receive majority support on the ballot. So if a candidate, since we're voting for two, I guess my intention for the motion, which I should have been more clear about, was, you know, if one of those two positions gets filled, then we fill that tonight. If both don't get filled, then that second one, we extend. So in this case, based on the vote, we have um, Raleigh-Durham Airport Authority. One vacant position has been voted for Yesenia Polanco Galdamez. And then we have, based on the votes, two other candidates. One candidate got two votes and one candidate got one vote. So that means that there is another candidate who has um, two votes. So and that, that's the one that the, I guess the motion, you know, so we have, you know, another candidate who has less than a majority of yeah. the, 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 um, the body selection. So that is the one that we will delay. Yeah. So to be clear for the record, apologize. Sometimes it's just good to go over it. You know, they say measure twice, <laughs> cut once. For Raleigh Durham Airport Authority, you have nominated one candidate. Um, not sure of the gender, but I'll say last name Polanco Galdamez. And then we will hold open the second position until we get a majority for one of the other candidates. So in other words, we will re-advertise for one candidate. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. So to all of the out other um, individuals that were selected to serve, congratulations. We appreciate your service. Um, and um, thank you. All right. So is there anything else that needs to be brought to the board before we go into closed session? Any other business? Hearing none, we'll thank the audience for watching and uh, being with us this evening. And at this top time, the board is requested to adjourn into closed session for the following, to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness condition of appointment or condition of initial employment of an individual, public officer, or employee or prospective public officer or employee or to hear or investigate a complaint, charge, or grievance by or against an individual public officer or employee pursued to GS 143-318.11A6. Um, the other one is to consult with an attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body in the matter of, is that Herma, Hermana Miles Bonkus? Mina Bumpus. Uh, and as administrative of the estate of? Mari Bumpus. Okay, and in her individual capacity, and Jerry Jerome Bumpus, Jr., in his individual capacity versus Clarence F. Burkhead, et cetera, which, with which privilege is hereby acknowledged, GS 143-318.11A3. I will entertain a motion to move into closed session. Second. There's a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. We're in closed session.
Uh, the, I have a motion. The motion is to approve a starting salary of of 170,000 for our new DSS director, Maggie Savitid Castin. Savitikin. 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 Savitikin, is that right? Okay, so um, if I could get a motion. So move, Madam Chair. It's been moved. Second. And properly second. All in favor? Aye. Pass. Motion passes five to zero. Okay. Is there anything else? Any other business? If not, I ask for a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned.